transaction, and a browser has become what we used to call a fat client. It's kind of funny, right? We used to all have fat clients on our computers. Then we all, then we like said, hey, we could do web browsers, and they could be an ultra thin client. And now your browser is a larger install than your fat client used to be, and it's slower. So I've been accused of being offensive. So we're going to start by doing a little bit of offensive thinking. And we're going to break all those the three things that I discussed earlier down by how we're going to exploit these weaknesses. So users love to click stuff. And hackers love users who click stuff. <laughs> That's a pretty general good statement. By the way, this example, this is actually real, but I just couldn't put the name of the game on it. It exists on Facebook. Um, but uh, it was a great example of click jacking. But you have to go find it yourself, and I'm going to tell you where it was on Facebook. Um, so, <laughs> so there's this game. Uh, when this originally came out, this whole click jacking idea came out. And it basically said, don't let the panda get hit by this, these bouncing red balls. And you clicking on the red balls. Well, the interesting thing was that as you were clicking, you were clicking on these links in the background that you didn't know you were clicking on. And you were installing all sorts of cool things on your machine. <laughs> so the idea was you're going to click the dots, you're going to click these hidden buttons because you're clicking where you want, they want you to click. Right? So this is just an overlay, fl a flash overlay over this evil href back here. And you get this exploited page. It was kind of hidden, and it was, uh, it was pretty ugly. Um, sometimes exploits require absolutely no hacking at all. Who either plays this? Okay, first off, who plays this? <clears throat> Thank you. I was going to ask you to leave. Um, <laughs> here's, here's the next one. <laughs> the ne here's the next one. Ready? Parents or spouses or girlfriends, etc., play this. Farmville? Yeah. <coughs> Farmville or uh, what's the other one? Uh, Monster Wars? Uh, there's another one. Uh, uh, zoo, the new stupid zoo one. By the way, they're stealing everything you have on Facebook. And they just actually, so there's a class action lawsuit. So this Zynga company was uh, semi-legit. They claimed they had no idea this was happening. Funny enough, so you would actually... So I don't, I don't believe people are this stupid, but actually they seem to be because there's a lawsuit proving they are. <laughs> in this game, you could get, in the head, get ahead in the game by giving them money. Like, real money. <laughs> to the game. To farm. Virtually. And waste time. You can just give it to me. I'll take it. You don't even have to do anything. Just give me money. So they ended up... Uh, this is on behalf of users who lost money as a result of ex uh, accepting misleading or fraudulent ad offers, right? So you'd, you'd pay, not only would you pay them to go try this, you know, try this, ad, you know, ad for something, right? Credit card, you know, loan, whatever. You'd accept it, and you'd find yourself signed up for something you couldn't get out of, thereby money leaving your account. And there were people that just ignored that. So let's talk about rich content. The line between code and data, I think, has become just ridiculously blurred. You guys agree with me? I mean, we could use, up until about a couple years ago, maybe two years ago, we could actually tell the difference between what is code and what is data, right? Usually. Now code is data. which is a bad thing because now we can't figure out how to protect it from itself. Um, so MySpace was the ultimate worst example of this. And I love using MySpace because just nobody legitimate ever uses MySpace. Um, you could customize home pro these home profile pages by adding user supplied. It used to be HTML, and they realized that was a bad idea. And they took out HTML and JavaScript. And you could just put in CSS, right? What's the worst that could happen? And I always ask the question, why was that even a good idea? Because you could put stuff like this, right? You could put your own background in with a, a background URL link to some external nasty JavaScript that would, of course, you know, break same origin, but same origin's been dead since Elvis. And you could just hack people as they visited your page, right? There's actually no skill involved in this. What's worse is 
We found people on sites like this, and I admit that this doesn't transfer well into a, whatever resolution we're in, but there's a site called pimp-my-profile.com. Pimp my profile. Sounds legitimate enough, right? Which is littered with ready-to-paste crap, and I have crap italicized because it's all there is. There's actually profiles that, or profile pimps. I didn't. Make, I can't make this stuff up. It's too. It's too funny to be made up. That you could. That users could upload to the site, and people would simply select all, paste into their profile. How many of them you think could read CSS and know and any clue as to what they were pasting? As long as the pretty little snowflakes fell on their profile page, they were pretty happy, right? By the way, I love this. I, I, I clicked this. I went to this page on my uh, little sandbox machine, and I had to add this. Don't you just want to install the Be Social toolbar? I mean, doesn't this just say, download now? Install this browser plugin. It'll make IE faster. <laughs> uh. So rich content. There's literally tens of thousands of social media add-ons out there. There's lots of them. Do you suppose any one of them just may be evil? Or how about all of them? Should sites differentiate between data and code? That's actually a very interesting question. And the question becomes, how? But data should be static information, and code should be script or program modifications. Should be. Until you run a site like Facebook and you realize that data actually is stuff that modifies the site, a la plugins. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Functionality is the arch enemy of security. If you disagree with me, okay, good. Every time you add a new function, you break something. All right. Anybody ever heard of Mike Bailey? Okay. Mike is the arch enemy of Flash. I'm pretty sure Adobe has a hit out on him. Uh, because of things like this, this is actually from uh, 22nd. Mike IMs me and, uh, on my phone and says, uh, I can own Facebook again. And I went, great, what do you do this time? Well, interesting abuse of flash objects, shocking. A little bit of cross domain and take out security. And you get something like this. So Dan wrote this up. And, it, and the, uh, the, the headline says, Amateur Goof Makes Twitter Account Hijacking a Snap. Go read the, the details of this. But basically, it deals with tricking, uh, basically downloading one of um, one of Twitter's Swift files, repurposing it, basically hosting it on your own machine, building it across domain. Okay, everybody know what across domain that XML file is? Okay, in, those of you that don't, in Flash, if you have a Flash object, you have hopefully a cross domain that XML file that says anytime that Flash object requests something from a different page, different site, that file is supposed to tell it, here's where you're allowed to fetch other objects from. By default, anybody want to guess what it is? Oh. Star. Which is a wild card for? Everything. Everything. Isn't that awesome? I mean, why do you want to make restrictions? You don't want to restrict programmers, right? Got to let them be creative. The juices. Stupidity. Anyway. <laughs> so, this was really bad, though. So what ended up happening was you grab the Swift file, you put a very permissive cross-domain.xml file all on your machine. This Swift file would then go fetch credentials. See, by the way, the nice thing about this Swift file, if you downloaded it, uh, it semi-authenticated to the service at Facebook that would retrieve people's profiles. Anybody know where this is going yet? You don't actually have to log into Facebook to retrieve everything about everybody's profile. You just have to know their profile ID and have this. And just cycle. That's pretty evil, guessing... You could probably use that for something. <coughs> Data mining. Anybody ever do this? This was my favorite thing to demo. Uh, in fact, back in back home in Chicago, we had a they do a thing called Chicago Con, and last fall we did a workshop. It was like four hours. And all we did was something just like this. We googled file type SWF for Swift Swift, uh, Swift file in URL XML. We checked to see if there was a cross-domain file. Usually they look like this, 